Hey guys, thanks for showing up to the Shiny Things podcast. I'm Lisa Mitchell, communications expert and certified body language trainer. I'm here to help you figure yourself out a little bit and be able to decode other people better too. The goal of the Shiny Things podcast is to get you showing up as your most clued in and confident self in any situation. This season, we're focused on getting real about dating in an app-based digital world. We're going to dive into the good, bad, and really, really ugly parts of dating on demand. With so many apps bringing you so many options in such a short time, it's hard not to get distracted by shiny things. Let's get the conversation started. Today, we're discussing the concept of mindful dating. What does that even mean? And how do we go about doing it in the digital dating world that we're currently operating within? To discuss this today, I am totally fine admitting I am out of my league. Mindful dating is not really my forte. And unfortunately, I haven't been very successful in trying to date in a mindful way very often. So I have brought in Laura Palmer to join us today. Laura is founder of bridgenosis.com and is a mind shift expert, helping people to upgrade their mental software at the subconscious level to help break damaging patterns and to rewrite limiting beliefs. Laura, welcome to Shiny Things. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So, okay. Explain to me what in the world it even means to date in a mindful way. Well, I think that when you're talking about mindful anything, you're really talking about being consciously tuned into what is your intuition? What is your, your real self want? So you're, you're, I think it's authentic dating where you're actually being yourself and you're cluing into what your soul wants, what your spirit wants, and not necessarily what your mind wants. And so even though we call it mindful dating, it's not necessarily that you're dating from your mind, but rather you're dating from your heart and you're being mindful of what might be going on in your mind as you're dating. Wow. So that's really interesting. So it's not even necessarily a mindset or a shift. It's actually almost like intuitive. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think it's both. I I think that you have to have a mindset that allows you to move into um, being able to hear your inner voice and and let your own GPS guide you through the dating so that your mind's supporting you instead of instead of controlling you. Wow, that's really interesting. So I want to read a excerpt from an article that Ira Israel did in Huffington Post back in March of 2014. And he's a licensed counselor and psychotherapist. And in regards to dating mindfully in a modern environment, he says, thus, when we date, we must be mindful of our own expectations and assumptions, our own projections, our own ways of communicating our own psychological baggage and our own attachment dynamics, so that we can show up authentically make honest commitments, communicate with the utmost possible compassion and integrity, and learn how to grow intimately with another human being over a period of time. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about his, his definition? Well, I, I am, I'm in agreement with him. I think that uh, it sounds complicated. I, I want to kind of roll back a little bit and give you and our listeners a a framework to think about to operate in as we're moving forward that might simplify this a little bit. Yes, please. Is this really, it kind of sounds impossible. Like when you consider that you meet most people by swiping left or right, right now (laughs) from a picture, like how do you get to all of that? Well, we can start, I'll give you the framework first and then we can go, we can go from the beginning and turn how you can use your, your authentic self to help you from the app stage to the dating stage. Cause that's really the, the goal for most people. Although yeah. I do think some people just get a little ego shot out of swiping and having what? nobody would ever just run numbers on a dating app. Come on, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> but, but setting that aside, cause that's probably a whole nother episode, um, on why people might be doing that, but, uh, or maybe it's not, maybe we'll come back to that. <laughs> But I, as you know, I'm, I'm trained in, in hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming, emotional freedom technique, Donna Eaton's energy medicine. And all of these things I'm trained in now, I found through my own personal journey. I was actually 
an employment lawyer first. And so my, I guess, default from, from uh, previous to learning all this material was to be very much in my own head and to be very analytical, very logical. So I've had to bridge myself in moving into the world that I operate in now since I'm not practicing law anymore. And uh, in this process of, of using these kinds of tools, I unlocked a gift I didn't know I had of being able to spot limiting beliefs that are playing at the subconscious level, which we don't realize are there, but they're holding us back. And those limiting beliefs are coming into play in the dating world. And so you might be wanting me to explain limiting beliefs. Yeah, that I was just going to ask you to, if you would, for our listeners, kind of talk a little bit about what exactly limiting beliefs are and how that would specifically relate to how they approach dating. Yeah, so, so when we're younger and we have to rely on the rest of the world, we're limited, right? You can't make whatever decisions you want. You can't follow your own heart, your own GPS. Um, you can't, you're even limited in terms of environment, relationships, resources. So the mind actually steps in and it disconnects us a bit from our GPS and it learns what, what it deems useful in those environments and in those relationships and in those limited situations. And so those limiting beliefs are actually quite brilliant when we're living that part of our life. But once you get out in, in the world and you're independent, you're free, you're not limited anymore, those patterns continue to play on an autopilot, which is a part of the brain that a lot of people don't really pay attention to. And that's where the mindfulness comes in, is if you can be mindful of what's playing on autopilot that isn't useful for you anymore, then that can make dating a lot less painful. So how do you how do you start to clue in to that kind of subconscious soundtrack or or how do you even know if you have limiting beliefs? Like is does it show up in behaviors? Does it show up in patterns or how how can we kind of be detectives to see maybe what we're tripping over that we don't even know we're tripping over? Those are good questions. Uh, first of all, we all have them. So just know that <laughs> everybody has limiting beliefs and most people have the same one there. There's the same ones. There's um, multiple. I've, I found 40 plus limiting patterns after, after doing this work with myself and also working with hundreds of people that are just culturally ingrained. Um, but how can you become more aware, more mindful of them? Well, part of it can just be simple ways in terms of how you're responding physically a lot of times when a limiting pattern is, is pulling you in one direction, but your heart's trying to pull you in another, there'll be some signal in your body. Um, and you know about this with your body language expertise. And maybe, maybe you can, you can um, clue the, the listeners in from your perspective on that, because I think you're more of an expert in this than you <laughs> realize. Um, but it can show up as anxiety. It can show up as some weird stress thing happening in your body that no no doctors can really help you with or explain. Um, it can show up in your stomach. Sometimes people just don't feel right. Um, or you just keep having the same recurring thoughts over and over again. Um, another way is to just be, be out there meeting and, and connecting with people because on the one hand, um, it can be scary to date, which might be why a lot of people enjoy the swiping and not necessarily the actual going on the date. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a whole different ballgame when you actually take action on that. Yeah. Right. Well, but the beauty and the gift in putting yourself out there and just showing up is that you can learn a lot about what's going on with you internally by just connecting with others because we're all, we're really all connected and we're all the same. And even though, the behaviors may be opposite. The actual underlying limiting beliefs are the same. So you could show up on a date and and meet your your counterpart and your opposite sides of the same coin. And if you're stuck in judgment and shame blame mode in that mental dialogue, then you're just going to project whatever at them and blame them. And you're going to say, "Oh, that person was a jerk or whatever," you know, or yeah, categorize let's, them. Let's talk about judgment for a second. Because you mentioned that. Now, is it judgment like like judging ourselves and our own behaviors and, and characteristics, or is it us judging other people um, and it's making actually, assumptions about them? It's actually both. It starts internally, and then it just gets projected externally. So I, I'm glad you asked about that, because that's a, that's a part of the framework 
um, that I think would be useful for our listeners. Uh, before we go too far into into judgment versus um, I, what I call discernment, uh, which is another another way to make decisions that is that is using your discretion. Um, if you were to think for a second, Lisa, about a time when you're in your flow and you're um, feeling inspired and, and things are just going the way that they need to go and you're, you're really following your internal compass, how do you feel? How does it feel in your body? It feels easy and it feels joyful. Like mm. I'm excited. I'm excited to keep working. I'm excited to keep doing what I'm doing. Okay. Like it's almost like I can't do enough of it or fast enough. Okay. And so the ideas come and that connection is there. And can you think of times when you've met people that maybe for the first time, maybe you, you get introduced to new friends, kindred spirits, and you just automatically know, like you click with them, you trust them right away? Oh, totally. Okay. Yeah. I, I call it the soul sister connection, even if it's a guy. They, okay. Guys can still be soul sisters with me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You just, right. it just feels right. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, and so when you have that, that's when you're following your GPS and your heart space is actually, um, is, is guiding you. Now I want you to think about another situation where you, things out, things kind of play out and you don't feel so good and you feel regret and there's this hindsight sort of um, overlay where you're like, man, um, I knew it. I should have listened to my intuition. Can you think about those instances? Oh yeah. That there's lots of anecdotal evidence for that feeling. Yeah. And see more often than not, we're actually following our intuition, but it can be, it can be pretty, uh, intense when we don't. <laughs> and so, and so, um, and so we remember those times and, and on the one hand, those, those times are just as valuable because they teach us how to tune into our tu intuition. Um, and on the other hand, you know, if you keep doing that, then you'll build up a space where you feel like you can't trust yourself. And that can cause some jading in the dating world. And, and just right. I have totally been there where I have quit dating for like, because I just didn't trust my own judgment to show up or to pick out someone who would be quality and or safe for me. Yeah. And so, so let's talk for a second then about this difference between judgment and discretion. And then let's go back to what you just said about, you know, being afraid and, and only wanting to date if you can get it right. Um, because there's some value in getting it wrong. And so I, I want to talk about how maybe our listeners can start to get the most out of dating when they show up and it's not really who they wanted to meet, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, that's awesome. I can't wait. Okay. So before we go there, I want to simplify the framework a little bit more. Um, still, still kind of dumbing down the first statement that you read. <laughs> um, the subconscious autopilot that I talked about, which is in overdrive when we're younger and it's absorbing the world around us, it's really focused on trying to get it right in terms of, okay, what is the world already created? What are the expectations? What are the um, standards? And how can I make sure that I'm meeting them? And so the mind really becomes very focused on, on just making sure that you're getting that external validation and it's so outward focused that it's not really tuning into your own GPS, your own discernment. And so that's really where judgment kicks in because the autopilot that is absorbing everything in your environment is actually um, forming judgments. It's learning what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, what's fair, what's unfair, um, what's safe, what's unsafe. And so these rules are kind of like over-inclusive and under-inclusive rules because Sometimes they'll apply and sometimes they won't. And when you're in a limited environment, most of the time they're going to apply because that's, you know, you're in the same environment where the rules got formed. But once you get out into the world, if you're still playing those same judgments and those same rules, then it's going to conflict with what your heart space, your discernment is trying to tell you. So how can, is there a way to like expedite this? zeroing in on this feeling and, and picking up on these clues? Is there something that we can do or um, something specifically that we should focus on developing within ourselves that will make us more in tune yes. to, these, to these discoveries? 
Yes. And so that's where showing up and being mindful in the dating world can, can really help you. Um, instead of going out and, and um, wearing the judgment hat um, from a perspective of just going and, and showing up and, and being in your mind and stuck in that space, um, notice what it is that is aggravating about that person. And then <laughs> ask yourself, what are you doing that's kind of like that to your own self? Oh. Yeah. Ouch. So, Ouch. so like, <laughs> like, for example, I went through this phase um, a few years back where literally like people that normally are reliable were like unreliable to me. And um, all these people that were promising things or making commitments were they were just falling through left and right. And, and so because it happens so much and it happened even in scenarios where usually it wouldn't, I took a clue that maybe, maybe my soul and the universe were trying to help me <laughs> pick up a pattern here. And it wasn't really about them. It was about me. There were some things in my life that my, my authentic self wanted me to focus on, but I was getting drawn into focusing on other things, probably things that maybe my mind in a judgmental space felt were, were important. So I was pushing down some of my own interests and in taking care of some of my own, my own commitments. And once I started paying attention to those things that I needed to commit to and following through, I stopped attracting people that were doing that. Um, okay, so that's really interesting because I think, you know, for myself in, in particular and the listeners as well, that that's really key what you just touched on, that if we're attracting the things in our dating lives that we are not enjoying or do not find beneficial, that those things are are reflections of what's going on with us internally. And until we kind of learn that lesson or until we address that, we're going to keep drawing those things that annoy us to us. Am I getting, am I understanding that right? Yeah. And the gift in that is that it gives you a chance to create an awareness, which then can expand your connection between your heart and your mind, which is going to expand your joy. So it's not really meant to torture us, even though it may feel that way. Are you sure? <laughs> I think so, because I've been kind of going through this myself. And I, I feel like I'm getting to a space where it's it's just easier. Um, and yeah, and, and you can be around, you know, you might notice that the universe sends you a little tester. And all of a sudden, that kind of energy that was triggering you isn't triggering you anymore. You're you're neutral, so you can you can be around anybody. You can let you can let those energies still show up if if they feel like showing up. But you're not responding in the way that you were. And maybe you're giving them some light that they need. So that's kind of like the the litmus test then, or to know if you've really cleared something um, that isn't particularly serving you is when you bump up against it again. You aren't you aren't reacting to it the same way. Is that, that's is a, that how you kind of know that you've made progress on it? That's a good litmus test. Um, and, and th speaking of litmus tests earlier, when I asked you about, um, being in the flow and meeting your, your soul sisters. And then, um, when you're not, um, those are also good litmus tests. When you know, when you can trust your feelings, when you can trust how you, how, how you feel about, um, the people that you're, that you're interacting with and meeting, then you can rely on your own internal litmus test. And it doesn't have to be your mind judging someone right or wrong or whether or not they meet all your, your mental criteria that you've, you've picked, you know, created for your dating. Um, you can actually just trust your heart. So it's like a shortcut. It's, it's a, it makes it a lot faster. And, and so that same shortcut you can use in the very beginning. I, I promised we'd talk about, well, before you even go on a date, um, and we kind of jumped into the other stuff, but, um, when you're actually doing the online dating, pay attention to how you feel when you look at someone's profile or when you get an email, if you feel calm, if you feel grounded, then that's a good sign. But if you feel anxious or you have some weird kind of pit in your stomach, then that's probably, even though you might think that they look hot and have all these things that they're saying in their profile that seem awesome, they may not be really who your authentic self wants you to meet. Wow. And it's not about them being good or bad, right or wrong, shady and shady. It's just, you know, if you're wanting to make your dating a little more efficient, you can use your feelings and your intuition 
um, to, to do that. And some people have such strong fear that they're going to get it wrong, that they'll just keep messing, you know, they'll keep, uh, spending their time, um, meeting people. And, and so it's not as efficient, (laughs) um, because you're, it's like, you don't really know, but when you're meant to meet somebody, you're going to meet them. So a little faith and serendipity helps with dating as well that, you know, if you do turn somebody down on an app and yet there's someone you're supposed to meet, the universe will bring them to you seriously. (laughs) Well, so that's interesting. So do you think that it's possible? I know that you've, you've mentioned several times that showing up is, is really serving us in some way, whether it's helping us tune in more to ourselves or to get in, you know, more aware of, of a limiting belief that we have. Is there any, do you think that there's any fear of showing up too much, like just getting, being around too many people, going on too many dates, running too much volume? Is there, is there a point where it, it, that balance kind of shifts and it's like, yeah, this is not really serving your discovery process any longer? Well, I think that's a question that gets into judgment and Um, um, what might be too much for one person um, wouldn't be for someone else. So I think that judgment thing is tricky. It's yeah. not even about what other people think about it. It's how do I, how do I, how do I place limitations on myself? Yeah. When do I make myself feel bad unnecessarily? Well, so, um, that's where I think that that's where, um, I'm trying to think of how to, where to go with this. If you're, if you're if, trusting your feelings about things, then you're going to, you're actually going to be able to, to kind of follow your intuition on when and how and who you're going to show up with. So, so maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's the key lesson then is that you have to, because I, and just so the listeners have some context, um, Laura and I have actually worked together quite a bit, um, on, on personally working on, on making some shifts with me and, and areas of my life. So I feel like even as we're talking through this today, I'm still learning some, some new things. And, um, it's just, it's really interesting to see how we kind of self-impose, um, you know, limit limits on ourselves and judgments on ourselves. And it seems like maybe one of the key findings is just, you have to just check in with yourself. And I know, Laura, when you and I had worked together um, on on some other shifts that we've made, that that was a step that I had neglected to do for a really long time. Like, I don't, I couldn't recall. I remember you challenged me at one point and asked me, you know, well, when, you know, when have you really, you know, checked in with yourself and, and just spent some time seeing how do I feel about the situation? How do I feel about this person? Why do I feel that way? Like I never took that time to do the self-reflection. And I know through most of of my dating adventure, which has been vast and varied, that there's a lot of times where I just show up for something and leave and don't ever think, I don't ever reflect. I don't ever think, okay, what what do I feel about this? How do I really, how did I really feel being in that person's energy space? And um, was it good for me or was it, not a, not a place for me. Like I just never took the time to check in. It was just always activity based. Like what's next. Hmm. Yeah. And I think that's probably what, what a lot of people are doing. And I think that, um, when you say, can the apps be too much, you know, going on showing up too much, can that be too much, et cetera, et cetera. I do think that, um, in the world that we're in on the one hand, the apps are really cool because they're a good screening process for you. You can actually look substantively, um, you can express yourself substantively without having to like meet tons of people first. You can kind of screen each other out with your profiles, but, and also feeling your way, like what does your intuition have to say when you, when you look at one? Um, but also I think that if you're, I think you made a good point, maybe in your first podcast, I'm trying to remember when, when you said this, but um, you, you made a point that if, or maybe I saw you post this in social media that if it's so easy to just constantly, you know, go online and look to the next person, are you going to pay attention to the person that you're with? Um, Right. 
And it's so, fear of fear out. And yeah. fear, it's phobo, fear, obo, fear of better options. Or like, how do you ever accept that the person that you're with is good enough when you right. could find someone else so easily? And see, really, let's take that down one notch lower into yourself. Um, when, when can you accept that your heart and your soul and what it's telling you is good enough? Oh. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when, when you feel it in your heart and you know this is something that's good for you, um, it, even if it's not going to be good for you forever, if you feel present in that relationship that there's something, there's something to it, then you don't need to keep playing in the apps and checking to make sure there isn't something better. And, but the fear of missing out is one of the biggest limiting patterns. That one's actually, um, one of the ones that I include, um, in, in one of, in one of my programs, it's like one of the top 40 plus limiting beliefs that I was talking about. But another one that I want to cover, cause it comes up in that article that you were talking about, I think, or maybe it was another one that you sent, but, um, there's, this whole fear of abandonment is huge. Um, yes. And, and fear of commitment, they're kind of the same. Um, so I want to, I want to just dig around on that for a second to give, to give our listeners something to think about. Um, when you're younger, fear of abandonment is, is really about other people leaving you. And it's a big deal because you're relying on other people and you're limited and you can't go where you want to go. So, having the faith that the universe is bringing you the people and the resources that you need in the right time and in the right way. Um, it's needed then, but a lot of times your brain kind of just disconnects from that and relies on those limited relationships that you're, that you're in. And so abandonment becomes doing whatever you need to do to keep the people around you happy because it's survival. You don't want them to leave. And it's not something that you would consciously ever think, but um, it is something that's like deep down root survival when you really go to the lizard brain. And if you want to go into the energy world, you talk about root chakra issues and um, where our energy is on, on the physical front. Um, that's really where that can be. That, that, that's the origin is not, and also just a sense of belonging, like wanting to be able to be connected to the world. And so if you have, um, situations where either someone's left you when you're younger, um, or anytime really, I mean, you can experience it like later in life and it can still be traumatic if it's tied into this, this abandonment feeling. Um, but in reality, um, the only abandonment that really exists is when we abandon ourselves, when we're not actually paying attention to what our heart feels and what our, what our, our, our intuition, our inner voice is telling us that will then lead you to attract people that aren't, aren't going to be really committed. And so when you're committed to your own joy, when you're committed to trusting your own source, then you're going to have people that aren't necessarily, aren't going to really abandon you. Um, does that make sense? It's like, it does. It does. So what I'm, what I'm hearing you say as well is that a lot of kind of this dysfunction or a lot of the, the disconnect that we create for ourselves is because we're working out of a place of fear. Right. And, and we're working out of a place of fear that we're not going to be, um, we're not going to be connected to other people and that we're going to be abandoned in some way. And so instead of trusting your own sort, your own intuitions, opinions of something and using your own discernment, you're thinking, well, how do I, you know, how do I make sure that this person likes me or, um, or stays with me, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's such like a strong, it almost sends you into a sense of panic and you get into this like people pleasing cycle of who do they want me to be or who do I need to be in order to make sure that they're going to continue to show up for me. Right. And then there can also be the other layer of, of, um, fear of, of not having freedom of not being able to follow what your, what your joy is. And, so then you won't actually, you're afraid of committing. You're afraid of actually um, being being in a relationship because you think it'll hold you back. And a lot of times, I mean, I don't like to categorize things as male and female because I, I think that any, any gender can experience either side of the coin. But it seems stereotypical that the guy is usually is often the one that 
is afraid of losing their freedom and the girl is afraid of being left. And so underneath it all is really just a fear of not trusting yourself. And both are the same. It's the same fear on both sides. Yeah, I love that you point out that it's not that it's not a, a gender specific issue because I have been on both sides of that coin myself. I have been the one who's fearful of losing my freedom and don't want to commit. And I've also been the person who's fearful of losing the partner and being abandoned. So it's not, it's, it's interesting that as, you know, a, a singular person with the collection of life experience that I can find, you know, and I'm sure our listeners can relate to this too, that they can find that it's not a static situation, that they aren't always in the same role in each relationship that they show up in. Right. Yeah. And, but, but underneath it's the same pattern that needs to clear. Yeah. Okay. So, so here's, (laughs) (laughs) so, so here's what I, here's what I'm guessing that most people listening to this now are, are saying is, okay, so yes, me like hands in the air. So totally me. You've just described exactly what I've tripped over. How do I start? How do I start resolving this? How do I start showing up differently in my dating relationships? Well, there's there's a lot of ways to re, to reprogram these things. Um, just to give something that your listeners could try and that you could even try um, would be a meditation. Um, when it takes longer to make shifts at the subconscious level with meditation than it does with hypnotherapy, for example, but um, but but I'd like to share share a meditation that I think is pretty powerful that you could do on your own for free. Um, it's a it's a Kundalini meditation actually, and it's really simple. Um, you get into a position to where your spine is straight. So that can be sitting um, with the pillow under you or sitting in a chair. You can also do this laying down, frankly, but you want your spine straight. And um, a lot of times it's good to bring your first finger and your thumb together. There's an energetic connection that happens that way with both hands. Uh, It's called Gion Mudra in the, in the yoga world. And um, with your eyes, you want your eyes to be point, uh, pointed towards your nose. So you're actually looking um, towards your nose as you're doing the meditation. And you can inhale in and think mentally, I am bountiful, I am beautiful, I am blissful. And you can exhale out, excel, excel, fearless. And so, and you just continue doing that. And I would say start with like one minute, work your way up to three, do it regularly. You can also go all the way up to 30 minutes or however long you want to do it. But it's inhaling in, I am bountiful, I am beautiful, I am blissful. That's you're saying it mentally. And then exhaling out, excel, excel, fearless. Um, So you're inhaling in through your nose. And then you're exhaling out. And you can exhale out through your mouth or through your nose, whatever feels right to you. Awesome. And I will link that in show notes as well. So if anybody didn't have a chance to jot that down, they can just go to powerbodylanguage.com and find the podcast episode. It'll be in the show notes because I don't, that's super powerful and very simple. Yeah. I'll send you a PDF actually that um, you can post if you'd like. Awesome. Yeah. That's so great. The the power of that kind of a tool is that you're actually programming your mind to be mindful and to program in a truth about yourself. And it's a confidence that will be built. It'll, it'll start to reprogram your subconscious. And even if you start thinking about other things, that's fine because your mind is just releasing old stuff. Um, and you're just continuing to build in and focus in that energy. Um, and that, that's just a, a very, it's a, it's a very simple meditation that you can do. Um, from a perspective of tools going deeper with it, you know, one of the things that I've created is an online self-guided program. And I have six audio mind shifters that you fall asleep to that you can listen to basically at night. And um, people are getting really great results with that. The six audios cover um, 40 plus patterns that I know that we all have. Wow, that's incredible. Laura, where should people go to connect with you further to get the audio mind shifters and to start clearing out all of this kind of junk programming that is no longer serving them? <laughs> Bridgenosis.com, uh, B-R-I-D-G-E-N-O-S-I-S.com. 
bridgenosis.com. Um, if someone wanted to try it for free, I have in the footer of the website, in the right-hand side, um, a sign-up, and you can plug your email in there and get access to the first of the six audios. And that first audio is helping your mind to feel safe to um, make the changes that, that allow you to trust your internal compass um, more than it is now. And um, it doesn't go into all the limiting beliefs, but it, it sets up a space because a lot of the programs that we have playing um, in the subconscious level are there to protect us. And so this first audio sets your mind up to feel protected and safe to be able to trust yourself. That's awesome. That's such a, a valuable resource and such a needed place to go to get back on track to be more mindful in our dating. And um, Laura Palmer from bridgenosis.com. Thank you so much for being on th the shiny things podcast with me today. Um, you will be back. I have lots of more questions. And I know that our uh, audience does as well as far as how we can be more mindful daters and how we can really just show up more as our authentic self. So thank you so much for joining me today on shiny things. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Great. Well, there you have it guys. Thanks for writing along with me on another episode of shiny things. You can't always control how someone else is going to show up, but you are totally in control of how you show up in every situation in your life. Dating is no exception to get the outcome you want. Show up as a person you need to be. It's totally on you. Let me know how you put today's superpower moment to good use as you're out and about in the wild this week. You can tell me how everything's working for you or if you have any questions. And I'd love to hear your story. So email me at lisa at powerbodylanguage.com and tell me all about it. Who knows? Maybe you'll get to come on as a guest. Until our next podcast date, keep showing up as the person you want to be.